What is one crazy story from work that you've been waiting to tell? My coworkers often talk of the incident that occurred about a year before I started working my job. Apparently, one sweltering, blistering, humid day an obese woman entered the shop to order some food. The industrial ovens were working full blast, and as there is no AC in the building, everyone was already understandably miserable. The obese woman apparently had poor hygiene, and immediately filled the small shop with a heinous mixed sense of armpit sweat and stank ass. She paid for her food, sat on the waiting bench by the door, and began to scratch under her fatty rolls. My unhappy co-workers hurried to finish her order so she would leave. They had just placed her sandwich in the oven, when the woman began to fidget. She lumbered to her feet, started to speak, then changed her mind and sat back down. She squirmed about. A couple moments later she stood again and rushed out of the shop without her food. After the initial confusion, my co-workers were horrified to discover that she had left a greasy puddle of diarrhea on the bench and floor. The smell was reportedly horrible. One co-worker, pregnant at the time, rushed out gagging. The other two, after a few minutes of silent horror, pulled on gloves and carried the bench out to the back alley, where they attempted to hose it down. May I mention that the bench was wooden, old, and chipped? And that it seemed to have absorbed the greasy shit with joy? Yes, it was unsalvageable. And it reportedly stunk up the entire alley until it was taken out with the other garbage three days later. Even after mopping and bleaching the floor below the bench, the entire shop smelled so terrible they had to close up for the rest of the day. I hear the shop owner gave them all an extra $20 in their paychecks when he heard what had happened. I used to work at a little hipster restaurant in my city. Not the best area, not the worst area. We were a really popular place, but very small and in an old building upstairs from the coffee shop. So there was always a long line of people down the stairs on weekends. We just clean off a large table, and this random disheveled young guy just walks past everyone on the stairs and sits down at the table. So naturally we're like, uh, can we have help you? He's obviously on some psychedelic, and just puts his hands up and says, let me draw you a graph. We're like, yeah, no thanks. Let's get you out of here. Escort him out, and he's grabbing the paper and pen at the host stand and shouting, let me draw you a GRAAF, while being dragged down the stairs. Work in a hospital ED, and I had a patient come in with a blood alcohol level that was too high for our breathalyzer to detect, goes up to 0.35. When we got the blood test back the patient was a 0.54. They were still walking and talking. My mind was blown. I was working in a grocery deli and was about to close up. This one guy came up and asked for a liter of ham. I did not spell that wrong. He literally said, give me a liter of ham. I paused, thinking I heard wrong. Oh, a pound of ham? No, I said a liter of ham. My gears were really turning. Did he mean the ham salad we sold in the cups? Nope. He told me he wanted very thin sliced ham. A liter of it. I told him what he wanted could probably only be obtained if we had a food processor, which we did not. He got angry, saying that I must be new and that's what his wife told him and that's what he wanted to get. I told him look, I'll slice you up a pound of ham. If I'm wrong you or your wife can come back, we'll refund you and give you whatever it is you're asking for. He agreed. He never came back. His wife probably thought he was an idiot. I work at a law firm, and I regularly travel all over the state of CA to meet with some off-the-wall prospective clients who are seeking representation for various reasons. There was this one time when I met with a client seeking damages for injuries resulting from a car accident that occurred as a result of a police pursuit. I arrived at the client's address, which happened to be a manager's house at a storage unit facility. I walked into the place, and it was complete madness. There had to be at least five people living in a makeshift one-bedroom apartment. I'm already over this meeting at this point, but I have to follow through. I sit down with the client to talk about her case and what I'm guessing was a garage added onto the apartment. One of her roommates comes into the garage, and without saying a word to us, he starts working out on the weight bench. Of course, he starts blaring some random death metal for his workout. I roll with the punches and keep my conversation on course. A few minutes go by, and the guy finishes his workout. Following that, he proceeds out of the room to go have loud sex in the room above the garage. After about 8 minutes, things calm down, and then another random girl and guy come into the garage. They sit across the garage from where we were sitting and start smoking something. I thought it was weed at first, but then I found out it was meth, I started to smell the chemicals. Of course, they were being proper hosts, and he offered me some of his meth. At this point, I'm over it. I packed my stuff up and just left. I worked for a company that employed extremely fit, healthy, and ethically minded employees. One day, HR brought in cupcakes from a local bakery. 
Even with me eating one every hour, there were still cupcakes left over at the end of the day. Never seen that before in my life. Don't expect to ever again. I used to work at this local pizza joint. My first day on the job, I get in at 9 a.m. My manager, Jake, asks me to help put away the order. Hands me a case of something and tells me to put it in the walk-in. First thing I see when I open the cooler door is a bong. Hey, Jake. Ah, uh, there's a bong in here. Oh, that's Eric's. Who's Eric? The owner. So then the next thing we have to do before opening is make a delivery to a gas station that sold pizza by the slice. On the way back to the restaurant, I jokingly said to my trainer, we should stop at your house and take bong hits. He immediately says, that's a good idea, and turns the car around to go back to his house where we each took a bong hit. When we get back to the store, obviously late, the first thing our boss says is, Jesus Christ, how many bong hits did you guys take? My trainer tells him, just one. And that was that. I tried to learn as much as I could for the first day, but I was so stupidly high I could barely talk. I ended up working there for four years. I worked in a call center as an interpreter for years one night during a nasty snowstorm that kept ambulances from getting through to calls I had to interpret a 911 call to an anxious father how to deliver his own baby at home. As a nurse, I have a lot of crazy stories. One night, close to shift change, I went to check on my elderly lady with dementia since I hadn't heard her scream in a while, kind of like when a toddler is quiet, you start to worry. Anyway, I stood at the door of room 524 and saw her silhouette in a weird, praying sore of position. I turned on the light, and she was covered in feces. My jaw about hit the floor. S was on the bed rails, the floor, the wall, etc. I made a motion to the tech and said, come here. You need to see this. After some coaxing, I lured the tech over. We both cocked. We looked at each other and decided day shift would kill us if we left her like that. Mem girl, she gone throw it, the tech said wisely. I convinced another nurse to help us clean up the S mess, and we geared up in full Ebola stuff. My patient didn't react well. She screeched criticisms the whole time and tried to help. My supervisor stood in the doorway and laughed. Eventually, my batty old patient decided she'd had about enough of bath time and started throwing gooey feces. She looked at me and screeched, you're going to hell. The image has forever been burned into my brain. Another time, I was clocking in, and a naked guy ran down the hall screaming. I thought about calling in sick right then and there at the time clock. I walked past his room on my way to huddle and saw him crying hysterically in his room while a bunch of white coats tried to console him. One of the docs was saying something like, it's okay, no one is judging you. We all make mistakes. One time, my patient abruptly shouted, get up in here and wash my pee. It was so loud that literally everyone heard it. I've never been so embarrassed in my life. Another time, I was doing some mandatory stroke education and watching a video in the nurse's station. Then I got that universal creepy feeling that I was being watched. I turned around, and there was an enormously obese shirtless guy just standing behind me watching the stroke education video with me. Turns out he was violent and confused and somehow bumbled his way into the nurse's station. He ultimately ended up taking a sedation vacation in the ICU. Worked in a deli that was by far my favorite place to work. We make subs and pizza as well as provide cold cuts and such. Normal deli stuff. Had a gentleman come in with his son one night. The son looked to be around his early 30s. Also, he was clearly fucked up on something. They both ordered the exact same type of foot-long sub. Being the nice guy I am, I just made a two-foot sub, cut it in fourths, wrapped it up, and saved them a few dollars by doing it like this. The son comes by to pick up the subs, and asks why there is only one wrapped up. I explain that they are both there and I save them a few dollars. The son mumbles a thank you, starts talking to me about God knows what because I couldn't understand a word he was saying. Gives me a fist bump and leaves. That's the end of that. Or so I thought. A police officer walks in about 10 minutes later and starts asking me questions about the guy. I answer them and ask what happened. Turns out the son walked to his car, got a knife, came back into the store, was stopped at the door because, well, he was holding a knife and said that he was going to stab somebody. Apparently he was going back in to stab me. I was escorted to my car that night by a manager and the rest of the time I worked there everyone joked about stabbing me. Fun times. I missed that job. TL, doctor worked in a deli, was almost stabbed. I used to work at a place that attracted oddballs, but there was one guy who took the biscuit. When he was hired, he seemed like an odd but ultimately likable chap. He had some habits which were a bit odd, half-hour toilet breaks, some strange tics, but it was a relaxed company. He got the work done and he worked later than everyone else, so no one minded. 
Anyway, office life went on. Seasons passed and people lived. A couple of months later, one day, one of the secretaries came in and started complaining. She couldn't find one of her high heels which she kept under her desk. We all had a quick look, but she was quite ditzy, so we assumed that she had just lost it. Then a few days later, another lady lost her jacket. Then another lost her dress shirt she kept in one of the lockers. Stuff started to go missing. By this point, we all knew something was going on, but we couldn't figure out what, or more specifically, who was taking all these items of women's clothes. One day, a few weeks after stuff started going missing, I was leaving the pub after some after-work beers and realized I'd left my house keys on my desk. No bother, the pub is literally under the office, so I popped up to grab them. On the way, the one too many beers crept up in my bladder, so I decided to drain the snake in the office labs while I was there. I slammed open the door in a semi-intoxicated state, fully expecting it to be empty. It wasn't. In front of me, squeezed into various bits of my co-worker's clothing and shoes, was the oddball in question, facing the mirror and furiously tearing his dick off. I froze. He froze. I shouted and ran out, with this horrifying image in my head burning on my retinas. I immediately emailed my boss and hurried home, never did grab my keys, thank god for my then GF. Needless to say, we fired the bloke, with some people talking of pressing charges. The worst bit was he never cleared out his pedestal, so when we cracked it open, we were greeted with all the crusty clothes he'd gathered. We lacked it and threw the whole thing out. Sometimes it's just not worth it. TLDR, old company hired an odd bloke who stole women's clothes, put them on when everyone left, and wanked openly in the toilet. I work for a group of doctors, and we had a couple come in one time for syphilis. She had a more severe case with a rash and everything, but somehow his numbers were low. He claimed to have caught syphilis from wrestling. He knew he contracted it and got treatment, but never told his wife. The only reason she found out was because she started showing symptoms. She admitted that he gave her vitamins from the doctor before it turned out he also gave her the clap before, but lied to her about it all. It was so sad, but still one of the craziest things I've seen. Working for infectious disease, I see a lot. I used to work for a huge grocery company in Texas. They go by their initials. I was the overnight coverage manager at a store that was open 24-7. The building started to fill with smoke, but the alarms weren't going off. I ushered everyone out and called BFD. They came out and found that there had been an electrical short in the bakery. The bread proofer. It never turned into open flame, which was good, because the short was right next to the main gas feed. It turned out to be a diversion, and someone had broken the pharmacy doors from their hinges in the confusion and made off with a whole lot of narcotics. I wasn't held responsible, which was a relief, but it really shook me up. At a previous employer, a health food store, a guy came in and ordered 500 bottles of sassafras oil. A police officer came in and asked about it. We showed him the order, and he told us to contact them when the dude came in to pick it up. They were making homemade acts. I used to work in a deli. Here's some of the stuff I remember from back then. A customer wearing an Austin Powers style outfit ordered a few pounds of ham. The order took a while to complete, and when I brought it up to the counter, the customer appeared to have fallen asleep standing up. A couple seconds later, he snapped out of it, took his order, and ordered about a quarter pound of cheese. When I finished his order, I noticed he was gone. A customer walked up to the counter and asked if we had mozzarella. Before I could answer, he pointed at the salami and asked if it was mozzarella. When I pointed out the mozzarella to him, he got annoyed and said he didn't eat cheese, then repeated that he wanted mozzarella. At that point, I had no idea what to do, so I called the co-worker over. The customer repeated his order to my co-worker, who showed him the mozzarella and got the same response I did. At that point, the customer got frustrated and said he'd show us what he was talking about, since we apparently had a package of it in the pre-sliced section. Turns out he wanted more dadilla. A customer went up to the counter and explained that he was buying food for a shut-in and asked for a chunk of plain, unseasoned turkey weighing 1.2 pounds. He even made a hand gesture to indicate how thick it'd likely end up, which makes me wonder how many times he's done this. One customer, when I asked if she wanted paper between our cheese slices, responded with it doesn't matter, we'll all be gone before you know it. Worked the graveyard shift at a warehouse store, think Sam's Club, but smaller. We stocked shelves while the place was closed. My boss comes by one night and tells me to help out with the spill and aisle whatever. I figure someone dropped a jug of detergent or something. Turns out one of the guys W with the forklifts knocked into the shelving causing pallets of material to slide off. There had to be a six foot pile of stuff on this forklift. Because of the aisle it was in it was a mixture of detergent, dry and liquid, pet food, and random light bulbs. Spent all shift cleaning it up and my clothes were completely caked by the end. 
I was off the next day, but they told me that the bin full of cleaned up junk spontaneously caught fire. We caught on our camera a group of seven people dressed in all black during the middle of the night by the side of our building, spray painting a pentagram and some weird symbols. We think it's just a prank by some kids, but it freaked me out a bit. The owner came by a few weeks later to repaint that area of the wall back to its original color. Now our bell that goes off every time customers come in will ring whenever there are no customers. We'll run up to the cashier counter to find nobody. Also now we get phones calls that automatically hang up in the mornings, but only on the weekdays. I try to ignore most things because honestly I don't get paid enough to fight with demons. If the demon is not actively trying to kill me, then we're cool. We have this guy at work that we call Two Coke Tom. Anytime you see him in the break room, he has at least two cans of Coke that he chugs and moves on to get more. One day while I was washing my hands in the bathroom, he walks in, downs a whole bottle of Pepto-Bismol, looks at himself in the mirror for a solid five seconds, and then heads straight into the bathroom stall. This guy already creeped me out, so I noped right out of the bathroom before I heard whatever he was about to do. I've told this one plenty, but nobody believes me. I used to work as a receptionist at a car dealership, not a crappy used car dealership, but a fairly high-end brand. When I first started, we had an online sales manager named Chris. Chris was a complete D-bag and never really grew out of his college self. He was in his mid-30s and married, I think, and still talked about cocaine and football all day. He also loved to hit on customers and had zero concern for the presence of a husband or boyfriend. There was a particular couple that had worked with Chris for years and had bought not only themselves cars from him, but their kids' cars too. They would often stop in just to say hello and chat with them. I saw them coming together one day to talk to Chris briefly, and didn't see either of them again for about seven or eight months. I had no idea at the time that Chris was sleeping with the guy's wife and had been for a very long time. Fast forward about seven to eight months, the husband comes in at about 3 p.m. on a Friday, we're super busy. Keep in mind that I know nothing about these people's personal lives, so I had no idea what was about to happen or why it was a big issue that this guy was in the dealership. He came up to the front desk and asked me if he could talk to Chris. He was holding a ceramic jar of some sort, not an urn or a pot, but a really weird jar, almost like it was made out of clay. I didn't bother to ask about it and told him that Chris wasn't here today, which was the truth. He seemed calm enough and said alright and walked over to the showroom. To describe my view, the desk is dead center by the entrance. The showroom is attached to the lobby my desk is in with no wall in between, so I see everything perfectly. He walks in circles for a little bit, not really looking at any cars. He keeps walking towards Chris' office and turning around when he gets close to it. This goes on for maybe 20 minutes until, out of nowhere, he goes up to Chris' office and slides a note under the door, walks out to the middle of the showroom, and opens the jar. He begins slowly pouring out the contents of the jar, which looked like dust or even gunpowder. He dumped them all over our showroom, and a few of the salesmen started to notice what was happening and just kind of stood and watched. He said nothing this entire time. Once he was done pouring out the jar, he kind of threw a fit. He threw the jar at the ground and started kicking the powder around, still not saying a single word. Our GM eventually came out and grabbed him with the help of another salesman and escorted him out front and held him there, and I had to call 911 and try to describe what in the heck just happened. The man stayed silent with the exception of a few cusses the entire time. Turns out, the man's wife had passed away recently and he found out after her death that she had cheated. He had her cremated and spread her ashes in our showroom. Chris never told any of us what was on the note, and we had to close the dealership for three days and have a biohazard team come and give us the okay to reopen. It was a fun day. What about you? Tell us your story in comment section, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Right now.